Our guest for today is the wonderful Johnny Lopez from ADP. Um, he is the inside global sales manager, if I got that correct, um, at ADP. Um, and he's here to kind of talk about selling, sales, customer service, all that good stuff. Um, so Johnny, I guess the first very easy question, um, why don't you introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about yourself, tell us a little bit about ADP, what you do for ADP, and as you said, how you got here. Sure. Well, thank you, Stuart. Thank you, uh, Junior Achievement, for the opportunity. So, yeah, my name is Johnny Lopez. I'm originally from uh, New York City, born and raised out there in New York City. And um, fun fact, I went to school. My college that I went to was in the Empire State Building. So um, that was pretty fun experience. Um, I served a little bit of uh, just experience that I had in my younger years, um, even when I was in high school. I served as an interpreter at my church in Brooklyn and in my community. Um, and was able to travel all throughout the five boroughs in the tri-state area, just uh, serving as a guest speaker. Um, so I got a lot of my communication skills from that. I moved to Allentown, Pennsylvania in 2005, and I started my sales career shortly after. Um, so I've been in sales for a little over 15 years now, um, and I am a global inside sales manager with ADP, which is one of the, the world's largest human capital management companies. And human capital management basically is um, the valuable employees that we get to work with or, or the companies that manage their valuable employees. Um, and so what some of what we do or what I do is I have the ability to uh, serve as a consultant and just help businesses and guide them on how to consolidate how they manage their employees around the world. Um, all under one vendor, which is us ADP, signed one contract rather than multiple contracts throughout the world. Um, all of their reporting is found through our single solution. And so it's a, it's a pretty neat job, pretty great conversations that we get to have with these organizations and be able to find them a great solution in what we offer. Okay, excellent. Um, so what are some things, some of the key personnel personal qualities that have made you successful over the years? So number one is communication. I'm a talker. I really enjoy talking to people. Um, I'm very social. I, I just enjoy people. So mm -hmm. I love communicating and I believe a lot in communicating and the art of communication um, and listening is huge. Um, I've learned to become a, a good listener um, and I value people's experience. So not only just hearing what they're saying, but also finding depth into what they're sharing. Um, whether it be a personal conversation or business conversation, um, when somebody is sharing, you should be present, you should be listening. Um, and I've learned to honor people, um, honor people that have gone before me, honor people in positions of authority um, because they have gotten there for a reason or they are in that position for a reason. And so if I honor their position um, one day, and, and this has happened much in my life, I may very well be in that position as well. And so I treat people the way I want to be treated. Um, and lastly, I would say, I, I believe to be an authentic person. Um, I'm not satisfied with surface relationships, whether it be personal or in business. And so um, even what I do in business today with ADP and just global business consulting and um, you know for global payroll management, it requires the processes that we manage require a lot of detail and a lot of uh, deeper discussions and uh, deeper relationships with our clients. So it's what I do naturally in my life. That's how I was brought up and it's what I do in business today. So I think it all connects. Excellent, yeah. So I want to talk about that. You said you love people. Was Or you always been like someone who's been outgoing and liking to talk to people or you know, is that something you had to learn how to do? How, how did that come to be? So I grew up in a family that enjoyed people. My father is just as outgoing as I am. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, we have a lot of similar personality traits. My mom is much more of a, the deeper person, more assertive. So I, I tend to be a blend of both. Um, and coming from New York City, coming from a major city, you come across a lot of walks of life, especially right. when I got to go to college. So, you know, I'm commuting from Brooklyn to Manhattan and um, just the people that I was around every day. I was in rush hour traffic, you know, and on the train, on the transit system, and um, just rubbed shoulders with a lot of people. Um, and I, I feel fortunate to have come from that background because um, it's allowed me to see different walks of life. It wasn't only about a social uh, class. It wasn't just a certain um, uh, ethnicity. I mean, we were just mixed with so many people. So I generally do enjoy people. 
Excellent. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the next question. Um, were there key mentors in your career? Yes. So um, one thing that I always think about or when I'm asked about my career or my current state in my life, it goes back to how I was raised or how I grew up and the experiences I had then. So when I think of mentor um, that have definitely shaped what I do today in my career, I think of um, parents. I think of my uncle. I think of my pastors. I think of managers that I've had when I joined the workforce. And the, the common thing is that I've had to realize from an early age that I don't know everything. Although when you're young, you have a lot of energy and you know, even till today, sometimes I feel like I know everything. But um, if, you, if you wanna practice being a good listener, then part of that is valuing what people are sharing when they're speaking. And when I, I, I try to be intentional with surrounding myself with people that know more than me or have experienced more in life than I have. And so um, from a mentoring perspective, um, that has helped me greatly. At the end of the day, no matter what advice I've gotten, what opinions they've given me, um, it's all been up to my choice and my decision with what I do, with the advice and the experiences that they share with me. But because I've able, I've been able, I, I believe in life, we're all a blend of all the information we get, all the experiences we get, all the people we've been surrounded with. And if you could find value in that, if you could pause and actually reflect on the people that are in your life when you have them, um, you could get so much more value out of these relationships rather than regretting that you wish they were in your life and they're no longer there. So, yeah. Excellent. Yeah, no, and I kind of, I kind of want to segue um, in kind of talking a little bit more about sales, but you mentioned something about listening to people and obviously with mentors, you know, they're there to listen to, but like how important is just listening to people, especially in your job, you know, working in sales and all of that? Yeah. So I, I consider myself, so I'm in sales and sales mm -hmm. a lot of times has a negative connotation because people think we have a certain script or a certain agenda and we mm -hmm. could care less about what they have to say because I just want to make money for my business, my organization. I want to get either commission or a check. Like they look at us as sharks, right? Right. Mm -hmm. At least that that's what the connotation is. Mm -hmm. I've been in this for 15 years now. And I realize mm -hmm. that they're a person. I'm a person. They have mm -hmm. a job. I have a job. They mm -hmm. have a goal in their job and they may not be in sales. And, and honestly, sales takes a certain personality or certain personality traits or certain characteristics to have to mm -hmm. be able to be effective in selling. Um, yeah. And it's not always convincing, but it's sometimes it's teaching. I love the aspect of teaching within sales. And so uh, when I've realized that it's not about my pitch and it's not about having an agenda or trying to get something out of them, because I was trained in that early in my sales career. Hey, mm -hmm. you know, I worked in retail. So you know, one of my managers told me, hey, everybody that comes through those doors has a $20 bill in their pocket to spend. Even if they say they're not interested, your goal is to get that $20 out their pocket to spend on a product. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get it. And then people just became a number and mm -hmm. they stopped being people. I left that organization and with the organization that I'm with today, ADP, been with them for 13 years now, now in January, I learned to value people so much more. Um, I've worked with small businesses all the way to national size businesses that I work with today, global businesses. And from a sales perspective and listening to people, it's made such a difference to be able to listen to what their real needs are. So you're not wasting time. You're speaking their language, you know, their world, and you're able to find a solution so that by the time they sign that agreement or, uh, or that contract or whatever agreement they uh, make with you for your services or your product, um, they're fully satisfied and they don't feel that they were, um, you know, tricked into buying something, but they are so confident that they made the best decision for them or their organization, you know, in that process. And so um, you mentioned there, like, you know, about the, the qualities you need to sell and all of that. Um, so as I mentioned you kind of before this, and, you know, students who have done this program before will know, is, you know, everybody sells in this program, even if you're not necessarily on the sales team. And, you know, that's obviously one, you know, some of our students really struggle with that. Like, I personally, I'm much more introverted than yeah. many people are. And that was you know, the idea of me going out and selling things, even when I started at JA, um, was like, I was like, Ugh, I locked up. Um, so, like, what advice can you give to people, like, you know, who are who have no, who don't have that necessarily that experience selling? You know, what can they do to kind of get comfortable with selling? I look at it at two sides. Mm -hmm. There's a sales side that we know, salespeople, outgoing, loud, 
talking, whatever. Mm -hmm. And you, and it could be an introverted person. Right. I think the most valuable middle ground here is the person that 100% believes in the service or the product that they're selling. Mm -hmm. If you believe in the value of what you have, then you will naturally passionately talk about that product or service and know that it works. Whether they reject your product or service or not, whether mm -hmm. you get a million no's, someone's going to find value in what you have and your ability to share that story sharply, confidently, and with passion goes a very long way. I think that's the art of sales. Um, there are people that are great talkers. Yeah. We call them flappers. They're great at communicating and, and they could sell anything, right. but they really don't have their heart into what they're selling in the product or the service. Mm -hmm. And those are the people that once uh, people finish the experience with them, they feel cheated. They feel mm -hmm. confused. They're like, what did I just go through? I mean, I, I kind of trust this person, but man, this costs a lot of money or whatever it is. But when you've earned someone because you brought them into your world as well. So one thing is when you listen, they bring you into their world and you understand their needs and, and, and whatever it is. But when you bring them into your world, why you are so exclusive, what makes you different and never forget in sales um, or any business for that matter, you're selling yourself before you even sell your product or your service. Mm -hmm. um, so you need to be self-aware. And mm -hmm. that's why it's important to have mentors. That's why it's important to have people that uh, constantly are, um, you know, you got to get uh, comfortable with being uncomfortable, get comfortable with being critiqued and um, have a great circle of people around you that are constantly looking at your blind spots with love. Of course, people of that course, generally yeah. care about you, mm -hmm. um, but we don't see everything. And that's just the reality. So in sales, I, ca I constantly have my managers, my mentors that are listening to my calls or watching my videos and and how I do what I do. And they're always suggesting tips. Um, and it's not necessarily a right or wrong. You're doing it right. You're doing it wrong. But have you tried doing it this way? Mm -hmm. You could always grow better into, you know, the sales process or how you do sales. Yeah. So making, taking feedback is obviously very important. You know? Huge. Um, yeah. So um, what does customer service mean to you? So literally it's, service and it's a uh, service to the customer, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, customer service to me is being present and listening to all of what they bring to you, um, understanding their needs, uh, bring a solution to their needs, go the extra mile. Um, John Maxwell is a great, great leadership guru, like well-respected um, mm -hmm. in the business world and all around the world. Um, and one thing, just one line I read in one of his chapters, he said, put a 10 on everybody's forehead and treat them that way. Mm -hmm. And I think if you do that, you'll be excellent at customer service because you don't devalue someone um, by any, for any reason. You treat everyone the same and you value highly um, what they're saying and, and what their needs are. Um, and I'll be honest with you, and, and you'll realize in life that not all people are pleasant to deal with. And um, you have to have thick skin. You can't take customer service issues or problems personal, mm -hmm. um, but you can personally go the extra mile to make sure that even if you can't find a full solution for them, that their experience with you went far further along than what you were trying to service or sell, um, which is huge. Um, I, I'll tell you two guys that stick out of my mind was my first car salesman mm -hmm. and my real estate agent two huge purchases in my life. So I've had three, my wife's engagement ring, of course, my first car and my home. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the car salesman, I went to the lot. I actually knew someone that knew the owner of this dealership. And he told me, I'll take you to the dealership. I know the owner. You don't got to go through the sales process, blah, 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 blah. I didn't listen. I went anyway. I showed up. I saw this car on the lot and I fell in love with the product. The product already sold itself because I loved it. Right. I says, hey, and I'm like, hey, I don't want to talk to you, bro. I'm like, I don't need a sales guy. I don't need a sales guy. He was like, oh, no problem. I won't. That's not why I said I just generally want to know how you're doing. 20 minutes later, I'm doing a test drive in that car. And mm -hmm. he's not talking about the car. He's talking to me about me. So what do you do? you know, what do you do for a living? And, and, you know, how do you, how do you drive or what do you, commit? oh yeah. And he starts relating to me as a person. 
by the time the test drive was done, it was a very pleasant drive and it wasn't salesy at all. Mm -hmm. And he goes, so how'd you feel driving? And he got all in my head about my experience with that demo or that test drive. Mm -hmm. And I, I told my friend, I'd rather buy from this man because this man sold himself and the car sells itself alone. It's amazing. And I bought from him and I, and I bought a second car from him eventually. Uh, my real estate agent to this day, like we send each other Christmas cards and, you know, we're in, we're in each other's lives and it just went beyond the sale. So the value of customer service is huge because you treat people like people. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, it matters a lot. I've had many people from a customer sales perspective that were not able to service me or handle a solution the way I would have loved to. But mm -hmm. them as a person were so polite and so proper and so professional that I was satisfied with their professionalism more than not getting the outcome that I wanted. Yeah. So. And I think it ties into what you said about, you know, just listening to people and, you know, caring about other people. Right. The previous answer. Absolutely. Um, so students, of the J company program learn about the importance of being able to pivot in their business endeavor. Um, what's an example of a pivot you've done in your career and how did you kind of manage that, come to that point, handle all of, you know, the decisions emanating from that? So in, in my world of business and in inside sales, we mm -hmm. do all of our business in an office right. and there's a field team. They are the people that visit organizations, visit companies. And so, you know, a little background, the first two years of my sales career, when I moved to Pennsylvania, I worked for the wireless, uh, a wireless company, phone, yeah. cell phone service. Mm -hmm. And I did retail. Mm -hmm. And, um, I remember my first day on the job, I took a temp job with one of these companies to be a greeter at a door. Right. It was just to get a job. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be responsible get a job, you know, pay my own bills or whatever it was. And I almost quit the first day because I was on my feet the whole time. And I remember having a conversation with my mom, my mentor at the time, right? And yeah. she said, just stick it through. It's just day one. You can't quit on the first day. I'm like, you don't understand, whatever. Long story short, they let go of all the temp uh, people after six months and they hired me in the organization um, because I ended up building relationships with management and the salespeople that were there. That mm -hmm. launched my sales career. I was with them for two years and I was working retail hours and I was getting tired of working retail. I'm like, I don't have a life, you know, I, you know, these hours. I'm, I remember it, it hit me so hard. The night I closed on New Year's Eve, I closed the store at 9 p.m. And then New Year's Day, I had to open at 7 a.m. And I said, this ain't life. I mean, the money is good. I'm in sales. I, I enjoy what I do, but this is not life. I had a conversation with my manager. My manager said, stick it through. Become a professional at what you do today, and the right opportunity will come one day. And I had to stick it through and trust his word because it was getting to me. My morale was dropping. I wasn't as excited about sales. And, and, and sales, um, your mood reflects what you're going, it's, you, you, unless you're an excellent actor, like you as a person, because you sell yourself, um, what you're going through or how you feel, if you feel, if you don't enjoy what you do, then you're not gonna enjoy the sell, sales process and you're gonna make a horrible experience for the person you're communicating with. Long story short, I mean, I say that about all my stories, but um, I ended up getting an opportunity with ADP probably three weeks after that conversation. Mm -hmm. an 8.30 to 5 job. And um, I was, for seven years, I worked with small businesses. And again, I get, my mind was like, I'm, I'm so tired of doing the same thing all the time. And one of my mentors, I went to a mentor and I said, hey, I want you to mentor me, number one. I want to excel my career and expand my career. And I want to do larger business than what I've been doing for seven years. And that was probably the largest pivot of my career. He said, we need to work on you and you have to brand yourself in your organization. And I had to learn to um, refine all of my skills and all of, of all of who I was. He goes, you need to become the mayor of this organization and everybody should know who you are and um, they should speak highly of you. And you need to know everything, anywhere you want to go or any position you want in this company, you need to know people in that position. You need to know what they do what their job requires, um, because when you have a conversation with them, you should be have a full understanding of who it is that you're talking to. 
And that's that was a sales process in itself. It's like any type of interview or any type of uh, promotion that you want. And by the time I was able to get promoted, it took a year of me branding myself and working at myself and being aware of my habits and traits and things that I had to change. My transition was so smooth because of that pivot, that preparation. It went from having a stale mind or lack of motivation to now fully enjoying what I do today. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, so um, as everyone knows, um, we did open up for questions, but I will ask one more question to, um, yeah. to Johnny before we kind of get into that. So students start thinking up your questions. Um, so Johnny, um, what's one thing you wish you had known in high school now, knowing where you are now? I used to look at education by grades. Okay. And, um, you know, I, when I was in, 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 in school before college, I was like, I can't wait till my 12 years of school is done, right? Mm -hmm. And then when you look at college, I can't wait for my two years or four years to be done. And I looked at education for what the classroom setting was or, or what the degree was or whatever it, it may be. And in my 20s, I, I, I was a, a I had a few years, I'd call it a good solid five or six years of thinking I knew it all until I, I hit a hard stop and I had to come to terms with myself. You're not done learning and you should always be learning. And I've learned, um, you know, in my late twenties and now that I'm in my thirties is I've become a student of life, a student of uh, every place that I serve, whether it be my community, the job that I do, the people that I work with, um, my family, my, my, my home. Um, I'm always learning because as you learn, education just broadens your mind. And education is not just the 12 years of school or the four years of college or, you know, if you're going to go for your Ph.D. one day, whatever that is, always be learning through every experience, through every opportunity. Um, there are opportunities that have come across in my life that were not on my radar. It's great to have goals. It's great to have um, markers in your life that you want to achieve. But don't be blind uh put on blinders to seeing opportunities or experiences that you can have that will build you to be a more valuable person um so yeah i wish in high school somebody would have told me to to be more humble and always be learning i've learned that finally in my life but um yeah that, i think that's a great piece of advice that i wish somebody would have shared it's definitely what i shared today yeah, with younger people absolutely great that's great great advice all right so now we'll open up to the floor so if anyone would like to um Ask a question, please. You know, hit the um, raise hand button, um, and um, and I'll call on you. Hi, hi, Jeffy. If um, uh, what's your question? So first off, I want to thank you for being here tonight because this is really interesting. What I've heard of it so far, and so my question was. When you were going about trying to be the mayor of the organization, everyone knows you and speaks highly of you. What are some things you did to achieve that end? Yeah. So I, I and I love that my mentor put it that way. He goes, you need to, you know, uh, shake hands, hug, ba uh, kiss babies on the forehead and all that type of stuff that, you know, a mayor that's running for office does in a community. But um, brand, learn the word branding, um, whether it be for your business or in your in your personal life. Because brand is what people say of you when they think of you, when your name comes up, um, your brand matters a lot. Brand is, you know, as, as individuals, as people, our character shows and how we live and the decision that we make in life. The character of your brand will show in how you do business. So what I had to do was I had to do, I had to have a very good work ethic. My business had to speak for itself before I spoke about it. OK, my reputation mattered before I spoke about it. We live in a world that er we got a lot of people talking, a lot of people promoting, a lot of people. You know, everybody's like a mini celebrity nowadays because of the platforms that we have to promote. in. but it's more valuable on what people have to say about you than what you have to say about yourself. Same thing about business. When you Google a business. At least when I Google a business restaurant or whatever it is, I look at the reviews. Because what people are saying about that business matters more than a pretty website or what I'm going to say, talk to when I call and when I speak with someone on the phone about them. So, you know, I and even with, you know, when you want to talk about a mayor, I trust the mayor when I've seen the work that they've done in a community, you know, not just when they're running in a campaign. And so 
who you are, what people say about you, how you work, your work ethic, the character of you, the organization, the business that you um, represent, that all is so much more valuable. So in, in that, I would say it, it, it runs deep. Being the mayor is not a popularity thing. It's really about the work that you're going to do when you're a mayor, right? So if you want to consider it that way, hope that helps or answers your question. Yes, thank you. All right, no problem. Thank you. Do we have another question for Johnny? Ah, yes. Um, Ayad, what's your question? Uh, yeah, so first, I just wanted to thank you for coming. Um, I'm not really like a sales guy, but this definitely brought like a new perspective, a new interesting perspective on my um, on my end. And my question was like, what are some of like the, like in your career, what are some of like the harder, like most difficult things that you've challenged, especially like sales wise or like, like dealing with like, I guess, yeah, sales in general. So that's a great question. The hardest thing to do is to sell to someone that doesn't think they need what you have. Um, and we call it in the sales world status quo. When someone is status quo, they're comfortable with what they have. Um, they don't want to change. And so what's important for you um, from a sales perspective is if you're educated um, about their industry or their business or their world, then you could speak, number one, you could speak their language. Number two, you could speak on potential experiences that they have not come across that may lead them to need you, your service or your product one day. Think about that for a second. So in my world for global payroll, people say, no, we're fine with what we have. You know, we pay our employees the way we pay them and we don't need to change. We're fine. Thank you. Not interested. And I say, wow, have you ever got hit with a fine in one of these countries for not calculating payroll correctly? Well, yeah, there was that one time, but that, there was nothing. I'm like, were you ready for that fine? No, but I'm like, it's like insurance, right? Nobody thinks they need car insurance until they get in an accident and they are so grateful they have car insurance because they can make a phone call and they're covered. And so if you understand the value of your service or your product, and you understand the world of the person that you're trying to pitch your service or product to, and you could walk them down the line of what could potentially happen if they stay the same, then you have a real conversation. They may, at the end of the day, they're gonna choose, well, I don't believe that. Well, it's happened. You know, one of the things that, you know, I, I, the insurance thing was a great example all the time, but, um. You know, challenging people to, to have a conversation to, to uh, you know, not think status quo. It, it's it's one of the hardest challenges in sales. But if you genuinely believe in what you are selling and your product um, and your service, then you're going to be an, a subject matter expert. You're going to be an expert of the industry, not just your own product. People love talking about themselves, but they don't like hearing when people talk about themselves. Right. You ever had a friend that just yaps about themselves and you're like, OK, I'm done. OK, let's talk about something else. Right. Don't be that salesperson. So that's part of the challenge is getting into their world, getting into their shoes, getting into their mind, walking down what could potentially happen if they stay the same and they don't consider your product or service. Great question. Yeah, great question. Uh, thank you. I just a uh, quick follow up question, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so like. On that end, I guess, like for I guess for all sales, how would you kind of like like what's the best way about like closing sales? I guess you can't be shy to ask for a close. If you are great at starting a conversation, if you're great at pitching your service or product, but you're not a good closer, then you're it's all in vain. You're doing it for nothing, and it's a waste of time, their time and your time. You have to. There is a way to lead conversations and continue to direct it. I think one of the, the greatest skills that I have is that I'm assertive on hearing the tone of the conversation, if they're interested or not. The minute I feel like I lost them, I say, hey, let, let's take a step back. Um, I shared this with you about my service or product. W what was going through your mind when I explained that? And they say, well, honestly, Johnny, you know, I didn't, I didn't like that you don't do this and this and that. Or um, I was a little confused. And, and, you know, when you mentioned this, 
if they got confused or stuck mentally, they're not listening to anything else you're saying after. And so I, I, you know, I was trained and I was taught and I do this all the time when I have a conversation with someone. Am I making myself clear so far? I just want to make sure that you're with me. Right. That question that I just asked you is a, a small close. Right. I just made sure you were still with me. So if you do small closes throughout the path and, and you have them agree with you, hey, uh, based on what we said, let's say you sell yo-yos. I don't even know if people play with yo-yos anymore or you sell cell phones. Hey, so um, I, I'm sure you would agree that the cell phone uh, that I'm selling based on what you need is the right fit, right? And they would say, yeah, yeah, of course. You, you've said everything that, that I needed and it works. Okay, good. So now let's talk about what it would look like to own it. Um, you know, here's the next steps. And you have to lay that out clearly for them. In order for you to have this product or service, this is what it's going to take. This is how long it's going to take to get it. Um, this is the type of support you're going to have after you agree to buy my product or service. Put yourself there. You have access to myself. You have access to my customer service team. And you close it that way. It doesn't end when the sales process ends. That's just the beginning of the relationship. I think if more organizations and more people saw things that way, um, they would have deeper relationships um, when it came to their business. That makes perfect sense. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, so we come to the end of our time tonight. Um, thank you, Johnny, for coming on and kind of talking about your sales and your story and stuff. Um, if you are right with it, we always encourage students to um, connect with you on LinkedIn so that they have further Absolutely. questions or anything with like it. Um, I did, um, if you guys looked in the MS Team post in your um, MS Teams group, you can find the LinkedIn uh, link to Johnny's LinkedIn. Um, I just as a reminder, there's no um, speaker series next week, so we'll see you again in two weeks. But again, thank you, Johnny, and everyone have a great week. Thank you all for your time. Take care.